Just as there's no official title for the extended risk assessment, there's no established or required format either. You can use whatever format best represents the clear presentation and logical flow of the analyses used to support the decision. In this lesson, we'll present one option for organizing the extended risk assessment. The elements of risk assessment, values, hazards, and probability are the basis for the format. The values is called a values inventory, the hazards is called fire behavior and fuels, and the probability section usually includes FSPRO outputs and weather, climatology, and seasonality. We'll get to the sections on effects analysis, limitations and assumptions, and conclusions in other video lessons. A copy of this outline is included in the reference supplement to the video series. Although you've probably seen standalone risk assessments produced in word processing programs and printed out separately from the WIFTIS decision, there are numerous advantages to entering the risk assessment into the WIFTIS incident decision. The risk assessment is a critical piece of support for the decision and it's often referred to in the decision rationale. Including the risk assessment in the decision ensures that all approvers and reviewers have access to the information and documents their awareness of the risk assessment as part of the decision. Published information is accessible by all WIFTIS users. Including the risk assessment in WIFTIS will save time and effort in the future by making past risk information and analyses easily accessible on future incidents. This lesson assumes the extended risk assessment is included in WIFTIS for the incident, and additional resources for downloading the content into WIFTIS are given in the reference supplement for this series of video lessons. The values assessment typically includes a values inventory for the planning area. It should include a discussion on any values to be protected in the planning area, both those listed in the WIFTIS values inventory as well as any additional values identified by local staff and stakeholders. Examples of the type of information that can be used to quantify the values assessment include type and number of values, location of the value, owner or manager of the value, and significance of the value, for example, how important is it? The SOPL typically completes the values assessment. Effective methods for quantifying and organizing the values inventory include a values inventory table and use of the mapping tools in WIFTIS. The fire behavior specialist is typically assigned responsibility for assessing the hazards element of the risk assessment. For the purpose of the extended risk assessment, it might be more universally understood to call the hazards portion, which deals primarily with fire intensity or potential intensity, the fire behavior and fuels section. For this assessment, we use fire behavior information such as fire intensity or flame length to characterize the hazard posed by the fire. Types of information typically needed to assess fire behavior and fuels for the extended risk assessment include fire behavior elements such as current and potential fire behavior for the incident, potential fire behavior near and around a specific value, resistance to control, and terrain effects on fire behavior. It also includes fuel elements such as the fuel models, live and dead fuel moistures, greenness of live fuels based on satellite imagery, vertical and horizontal fuel continuity, potential for extreme fire behavior such as active crown runs, long range spotting, or high rates of spread, disease or insect altered fuels, current fuels and fire behavior advisories, and information about the past, such as historical factors that have resulted in large fire growth or the characteristic fire regime. One of the primary responsibilities of the long-term fire behavior analyst is to determine the appropriate fire behavior modeling system to use for evaluating hazard based on the management concerns to be addressed, the time available for the analysis, the skill level needed to complete the analysis, the availability of the necessary data, the time and spatial scale of the question that is trying to be answered. Examples of decision support tools and resources that can be used to analyze these factors include fire behavior modeling systems such as FLAMMAP or WIFTIS basic and short-term fire behavior, Farsight or WIFTIS near-term fire behavior to analyze potential fire behavior within a given weather scenario, the models chosen must be applicable to the situation and outputs need to be interpreted correctly to provide the pertinent information. The Predictive Services webpage, which has numerous products of completed analyses such as the National 7-Day Significant Fire Potential Outlook and Predicted Fuel Moistures by Predictive Service Areas. 
These are areas of similar climate based on statistical correlation of ROS data. The Predictive Services National 7-Day Significant Fire Potential Outlook is also available in the WIFDIS from Links on the Situation and Intelligence Maps info tab. The National Fuel Moisture Database archives local fuel moisture sampling results from users all over the country, making current and historical data easily accessible. Observations and field reports from FOBs, FEMOs, Division Soups, Airtech supervisors are all readily available and useful for ground truthing model results. Local experts such as the local units, fire management officer, fire ecologists, silviculturists, and fuel specialists are all valuable resources for obtaining information on potential and past fire behavior. Land management planning documents like the fire management plan, prescribed fire plans, these often have valuable information about local fuels. Documentation from previous wildfire incidents in the vicinity, such as fire progression maps, are useful for learning about historic fire behavior in the area. This list of sources of information on fire behavior and fuels is replicated in the resource supplement for this video series, including web links. At this time, the most effective quantitative probability analysis of a wildfire's potential spread is provided by the Fire Spread Probability Analysis in WIFTIS. FS Pro provides a spatial presentation of the probability that the fire will reach any given point within the analysis period and a graphic and tabular output of probable fire size for the analysis period. The fire size distribution can help inform fire potential and thus the hazard component of a risk assessment. Additional output includes a values at risk table showing the probability that values such as infrastructure and jurisdictional areas, etc., could be impacted at some point during the analysis period. This helps to inform the values component of a risk assessment. The other part of the probability section of the extended risk assessment deals with expanding upon the seasonal severity and time of season components of the probability element using probability-based products such as long-range weather outlooks, climatology, and fire season analysis. We'll use weather, climatology, and seasonality as a title of this section for the purposes of the lesson. The fire behavior specialist generally takes the lead in this part as well. Types of information typically useful for this section include drought indices and outlooks, season analysis including comparative seasons and term files, wind analysis, mid-range and long-range weather outlooks, for example, the short-term weather forecast is automatically included in the WIFTIS decision, localized precipitation data, and preparedness levels at the local, regional, or national level. There are a lot of resources to consider to help quantify probabilities. Remember to focus the assessment on items needed to aid in the decision. WIFTIS has several climatology tools embedded within the analysis and situation tabs, including the ERCG graphs, wind roses, and wind vectors, Google Earth KMZ downloads from short-term fire behavior simulations, and hourly weather graphics with links to seven-day forecasts from the National Weather Service. Information obtained from WIFTIS can be captured with a map capture feature and inserted into the decision. Fire Family Plus analyses can be used to compare indices from the current season to those of previous seasons and generate a term file for season ending events and analyze past weather patterns. Wind modeling programs such as Wind Ninja or Wind Wizard can be used to analyze terrain altered wind patterns. The weather and outlooks pages of the Predictive Services websites contain many local scale products on drought, long range weather, and precipitation. Advanced climatology and severity products are available on the Wildland Fire Assessment System webpage. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Agency's National Weather Service and Climate Prediction Center websites have in-depth analyses and discussion products for broad-scale drought and climatology outlooks. An incident meteorologist or IMET can be invaluable to provide microscale information about local weather patterns and long-range outlooks. Local experts such as the unit fire staff, can often provide knowledge on the local fire season based on years of experience in the area, while many local fire management plans contain fire season analyses already completed. Although short-term weather forecasts are a critical component of this section, this is automatically loaded into the WIFTIS decision for the incident and does not need to be added to the extended risk assessment. This list of sources of information on weather, climatology, and seasonality is replicated in the reference supplement with web links.